So years ago, well, years ago, about three years ago, we built the 12.4 and stuck it in the field. And it has worked beautifully. And it's still up there. Well, it wasn't until yesterday when I took it down. When I built it, I used the regular ground plate, but I also made, a couple of three years ago, a huge ground plate and connected 32 radials, 31, 32 radials to that plate. So therefore the ground plate of the DS Commander needs grounded to all the radials. And that's worked really well. And I used this stuff which I got from RS Components, um, which is a kind of a braid. To be honest, any wire will do. Okay, I don't know why I used this. I think it's because it looked like I knew what I was doing. But anyway, I used this stuff and I soldered and put too much solder on. So some of these, I and mean, they haven't broken, right? And they still they still work. But I'm going to remake them. And this there was four on there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make six, four regular size, and six a little bit longer because when the pole tilts over, I need a little bit of extra room. So let's cut. four this size and two a little bit longer and see how we get on. So the big question is to do I solder or only crimp? Now I think NASA did some experiments. You do one or the other apparently. I like crimping and then adding the solder to kind of a sort of doing a bit of waterproofing. If you know, something's fallen on the floor. Ah, oh, it's the old one. I'll tell you what, let's crimp a couple. soldering now um, so we'll put the ones I haven't done to one side and then when I've done them put them the other side you don't need to watch me do this I'll do one and then speed it up and then we can go and have a look outside so I just want a touch on here oh I just thought it's gonna get really hot isn't it because it's copper <laughs> I can feel it already. Whoa. Oh, and it's just gone. Thank goodness for that. I don't know why I'm soldering it. Maybe we'll solder some and not solder another. I soldered it before and they seem to last fine. So let's not uh, get too oh, I'm shaking today. Let's not get too paranoid about it all. So I brought the trimmer in from home today and a few other tools because we're going to have a quick sort out in the field. So I'll finish this off and next time I see you, my future me is going to be in the field. All right, so I'll see you there. So that's the old one with the white, the white plates. And at about 70% up the pole, we've got this coil. But I'll put the new one in and I'll put the, uh, the guys in. And this was completely utterly overgrown so i'm just going to do a quick stream see if we can just sort it out without cutting anything Right now, obviously, those little straps we've made will go between here and this ground plate. Now, it looks like it's made of ceramic, but I can assure you it's actually aluminium. We'll give it a jet wash, and we might actually be able to make it look like aluminium. While I'm here, I'll do a bit more maintenance. In America, you have tools for everything. 
electric tools, you know, or <laughs> hydraulic. Um, five minutes with this. I've done it. I don't need an electric tool for everything. I mean, a strimmer, you need an electric. Be difficult to strim manually. <laughs> a massive handle. Okay, so the next thing is uh, I need to build the elements for this thing and string it up. We'll put some glue lined heat shrink on that. Lovely and hot, and then um, you can see the glue all oozing out. Okay, now we don't have water out in the field, but what I do have for the jet washer is this uh, contraption that plugs in and you can put this end in a bucket and that way you can feed the jet washer. But there's a little o-ring that fell apart. I only used this once. Now I've never bought o-rings before but I don't know how to gauge it but this one here looks about the right size. By the way, these O-rings uh, I got on Amazon for eight ninety nine. Look at them all. I mean, I've, I've never used an O-ring in my life, but at least I've got some now. I mean, it fits. I'll come out to the field and they're, they're putting in the fence. Okay, I installed these now. They work fine. And rather than putting those easy clamps here, I did an experiment and used that IC2000, I think it's called, from Bob Industries, and put super glue, rubberized super glue, on all the sections. Now, I'll never be able to get it down again. But, uh, you know, why not? You know, if you're gonna live in a place for a while, you can just glue the whole thing together. You don't need any clamps, and it looks really neat. I don't know if I should seal that. Stop water getting it. It doesn't really matter though, does it, thinking about it? Anyway, uh, next job. Oh, I've been faffing around. I can't get it to fire up. It needs primed, I think. Because what happens is that, uh, well, it needs primed. I need to physically plug it into the mains. Just fire some water through it, prime the pump, and then it'll all work again. So I need to find somewhere on site that's got one of those um, little connectors. Right, this one is officially busted, but Michael, who I've just discovered cleaning his car, has lent me his, so we're gonna use this one. You've heard of the expression, a stitch in time saves nine. So rather than letting it completely overgrow, which is what it was, I should be out here tinkering with it every couple of weeks, you know, just for a few seconds. I'm gonna have to put something in here, stop all this coming back up. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, it's a bit better. At least I can kind of manage it now. <sighs> Great news, I've got it all up. No straps seem to work fine. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm just gonna run through the bands uh, for you. It's kind of, that's <laughs> a little bit of proof, isn't it? Um, right, so I'll take the 18 button. I don't want the antenna tuner. I never use an antenna tuner anyway. 
So I'm at the top end of 80 meters is where I want it tuned. Now, if I hit the PFA button, I've programmed that to send out a 15 watt carrier. So at the top left of the screen, you can see SWR and I've got two little notches. So it's just over 1.1 to one. In fact, on the meter, it's about uh, 3.81 is perfect tune. So I could actually lengthen it a whisker and then but i spent for the for a vertical on 80 meters i'd spend more time at the top end of 80 for dx whereas a dipole i'd want tuned for 3.75 725 something like that so i'm happy with that 40 meters it covers basically the whole of the 40 meter band so i'm rock steady on that if you're in the us um you just need to take a tiny bit off but that's in the, that's coped coped don't confuse yourself, right? Just build it. If you build one of these, just build it to the chart. Right, that's fine. Because the bandwidth on 40 is blooming enormous anyway. So that's fine. Uh, no problem there. 14 is a wee bit high. Uh, 1.5 to 1 at 275. Now I spend a lot of time at 275 and above for the, is it the general class in America? Whereas it's actually best tune. Uh, like on the what I call the Russian end, that's <laughs> uh, 14, 170. So what I need to do is take off about an inch, two and a half centimeters, and that will lift that up. But that's the only band I really need to change. 18, I can't remember what the band plan is on 18. I think it's about there. It's next to nothing on the SWR, look. 21, next to nothing. 24, 12 meter band is fine. Uh, 28 it's a tiny bit high <laughs> on the meter it's from 27 dead all the way up to 28 and a half under 1.5 to 1 so i could shorten that a tiny bit and sort that out let me show you a little bit of footage So um, don't forget the open day, 17th of August, if you're coming to that, um, which is a Saturday. Uh, I'll see you there. But in the meantime, have a great day. I'll uh, shave, have a scrub up, go home now because I've been working my nuts off as usual, right? All the best now. Mm -hmm.